Welcome to the Northern Brain Injury Association's webcast on flooding, created to help you assist survivors of brain injury who are experiencing flooding by teaching them to identify their triggers, control their exposure, and manage their anxiety. Before we begin, it's important to keep in mind that just as individuals are different, so are brain injuries and the resulting challenges. Rehabilitation after injury, therefore, depends on many factors, but adaptability, flexibility, repetition, and patience always remain crucial to healing. When you give survivors of brain injury the tools to recognize and self-manage their flooding, you empower them, increase their self-esteem, expand their independence, reduce their stress, and improve their quality of life. The field of brain science is still relatively new and uncharted territory, so we encourage you to be inventive and creative, for obstacles are opportunities, and each success becomes a gateway to new beginnings. Now let's talk about flooding. There are two types of mental flooding that occur, induced therapeutic or intentional flooding, most often used to cope with phobias, and unintentional mental overload, most frequently occurring as the result of brain injury. This webcast addresses only the issue of mental flooding after brain injury. Flooding occurs after brain injury because the brain's filters no longer work properly. These filters normally allow us to sort through everything that comes into the brain, sounds, sights, touch, smells, movement, questions, problems, demands, etc., so we can pick out what's important to focus on. They automatically tune out the things that do not need to be noticed, such as the sound of a heartbeat, the sensation of clothing on skin, the movement of people walking by, etc. However, when the filters are damaged or impaired, everything comes into the brain with equal force all at once and too fast. Because the injured brain now works much more slowly, it cannot sort the information fast enough and becomes overwhelmed. This causes a strong stress response throughout the entire body, and the brain eventually shuts down. The person will feel like they have no control, and when they are flooding, doing or thinking even the simplest thing will seem impossible to them. Fortunately, flooding is only a temporary situation, and the brain will return to its usual function after it has rested. However, situations that cause flooding should be avoided whenever possible because it can take hours or even days of downtime to recuperate, which is frustrating. In addition, it's much more difficult for the brain to heal and make new neuron connections when overwhelmed and shut down. Strategies to work around flooding. We recommend that you teach the survivor to use the six R's as coping strategies. Recognize, reduce, retreat, relax, rethink, and return. Recognize. Assist the survivor to recognize the things that trigger their flooding, what it feels like when they are flooding, what their early warning signs are, and then to learn coping strategies. Here are examples of how survivors describe flooding. Head is spinning. Head is floating away. Total blank out. Headache that gets really bad. Thoughts are slow. Can't concentrate. Can't think. Can't connect two to three thoughts. Can't follow conversation. Can't finish sentence. And can't see what's in front of me. Confused. Don't know what's going on. Things don't make any sense. Really tired. Slurring speech. Stuttering. Staggering. Tripping. Falling. Heat wave through body. Sweating. Blurred vision. Get really miserable and cranky. Say things I shouldn't. Have anger explosions. The following are examples of triggered flooding. They are at the mall and they tell you that their brain is starting to feel fuzzy from the noise and bustle. They say they can't think clearly and all they want to do is run out the door. They're in the grocery store and they say that all of the lines, shapes, patterns and rows of containers are starting to vibrate in their brain. They feel panicky and jittery. They've just finished a meeting with their doctor or lawyer, and when they leave, walk right into a wall. They say their brain just feels done. Reduce. Help the survivor identify the things that make their flooding worse, such as places or situations that are overstimulating and cause sensory overload. Things like too many people talking at once, crosstalk, noise, hustle and bustle, crowds, busy malls, traffic. Bright lights, fluorescent lights, lots of visual patterns or colors. Teach them how to identify and avoid situations they cannot control. Teach them how to minimize stress and demands in their life and make sure that they don't take on too many things at once. 
Teach them to avoid doing things late in the day or when they are tired, hungry, sick, etc. Help the survivor come up with their own coping strategies. Retreat. Work with the survivor to help him or her learn to identify and watch for early warning signs that flooding is about to happen. Teach them to stop whatever they're doing and redirect to another thought or activity or simply walk away. Relax. Teach them to calm their brain by going somewhere quiet where there's minimal stimulation of any kind. Lying quietly with their eyes closed and meditating or maybe having a nap. Doing something mindless and with a single narrow focus like reading, watching TV, playing solitaire, playing on a computer, taking a warm candlelit bath, listening to soothing music, crafting, etc. Rethink. Encourage them to rethink what they are doing and to use coping strategies to succeed at what needs to be done without flooding. Encourage them to be honest and accept flooding as reality. Assist the survivor to take control of the situation in some way so that they don't feel like a victim. Encourage them to be honest with others by letting others know that they need to take a break and are not being rude. Asking politely for others to talk one at a time or to slow their speech down. Asking someone to take notes for them or to record the meeting so that they can concentrate only on listening. Encourage them to set realistic goals for the day and week. This might mean planning only one or two tasks at a time, taking rest days in between busy days, taking rest breaks during the day. Teach them to pick a good time to do things, such as early in the day when they are mentally and physically at their peak, during less busy times, usually early morning, and encourage them to travel during slower traffic times. If they must be in a busy or stressful place, encourage them to stay only a short time. Stay on the outside of the crowd or at the back. Have an exit plan in case they need to leave quickly, such as to sit in an aisle seat or stand near a door. Encourage them to take someone with them for support. Encourage them to wear a billed hat and or use sunglasses to reduce excess light. Encourage them to wear earplugs or headphones to reduce excess noise. Encourage them to socialize with only one or two people at a time or in small groups. Return. Have them return to life and try out their plan. Encourage them to keep doing what works and to modify what does not. Neuroplasticity strategy to strengthen neuron connections. Here is a neuroplasticity strategy you can teach survivors that will assist them to restore and strengthen neuron connections necessary to manage their flooding. Encourage them to make a list of their triggers, then place them in the order of how strongly they are affected and impacted by them. Teach them to pick the mildest trigger to work on first, such as being in a room with two or more people. Have them expose themselves to the trigger for only a few minutes, then leave. Be sure to encourage them to repeat the exposure several times over the week, always for only a few minutes. Teach them to gradually increase exposure, but only when comfortable and not flooding. When they can actually manage that trigger, encourage them to move on to the next mildest trigger. Teach them to repeat this strategy for each trigger and over long periods of time. And encourage them to recognize when they have reached the maximum levels that they can manage. This concludes the Northern Brain Injury Association's webcast on flooding. We hope it helps you assist survivors of brain injury experiencing flooding by teaching them to identify their triggers, control their exposure, and manage their anxiety. This webcast was produced with the help of the Prince George Brain Injured Group and was funded in part by the Province of British Columbia, the Northern Health Authority, and the United Way of Northern BC. The Northern Brain Injury Association provides prevention, education, and support to survivors of brain injury, their families, communities, and the professionals assisting them in a geographic area that encompasses the northern two-thirds of the province of British Columbia. For further brain injury information and resources, please visit the Northern Brain Injury Association's website at www.nbia.ca or call toll-free to 1-866-979-4673.